done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. For my guest to come up but before he joins in please i want us all to contribute to today's topic we discussed it last week and today is the concluding part thanks for joining i see five people on already that is a beautiful start please let's share let's get more people on board I'm waiting for our pastor to join in online on Facebook so we can start. Pastor is on Facebook, sir, so not on my phone. It's on Facebook, sir. Pastor, Safer, James. Good evening, everyone. Thanks all for joining in. Sorry, two seconds. I'm just trying to get my guest on board. I 
I think it's gone to the wrong place. Why we waiting? Can we please share the program? It's nice to have you on Ad Brother Day Yemi Oloye Olua. Thanks for joining. My beautiful sister Ongozi. Thank you for joining. I see you again. Oh, my handsome prince, dank handsome tallest. What a long, lovely name. Thanks for joining in. Please, let's get more people on board. Today's topic is also an interesting one. It's a continuation from what we did last week. My able counselor, Fumi, thanks for joining, Ma. Please, I don't mind if you want to come on and also chip in one or two things concerning today's topics. How many wives can I have? That is actually direct questions to the men. How many wives can a man take? Good evening, Pastor. Hello. Yeah, it's on yeah, Facebook, sir. How are you? It's on Facebook, not on the phone. Ah, 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 ah. On the Facebook? Yes, sir. I'm not sure I can be able to connect it from there. Can't you? I cannot connect my phone to the Facebook. If you go to my page, it's on my live program, sir. Okay, let me try. Okay, I believe you'll be joining us soon. Thanks all for joining. Oh, my wonderful brother is there from my state. Delta say, brother James Ogo. Thanks for joining in. How many wives can a man marry as a Christian? We all understand from the discussion we had last week that polygamy is not a new thing and it's not a crime in the Bible. But there are exceptions and there are there are guidelines that comes with it. And then we also have an understanding even from Africa, where most of us are from, because I don't know how many people this message is going to be reaching to. We know, we know polygamy is not a crime. It is allowed. It is what our forefathers have practiced. But then there is an understanding that is disadvantage, not just disadvantage, disadvantages that comes with it, and there's advantages that comes with it. We've looked at what the scripture says about it. You look at different scenarios. And we've come to one or two conclusions from last week. Which is, if anyone chooses to practice polygamy, we should not see them as sinners. We should not see them as criminals. We should not see them as they're doing something wrong. Because the Bible never said anywhere that thou shall not. So anything that is not thou shall not, it is not a sin it is not a crime. It is not a, something that God is saying, no, thou must not do it. But there is admonitions. There is advices that come from people like Paul, you know, and other ministers of, of old to advise you and to talk to you about disadvantages or why you shouldn't do it because of what has happened in the Bible. Before a law was passed, before an, an admonition was given in the scriptures, like some of the ones Paul did, you know, Paul said that all ministers who will marry must be, who, anyone who wants to be a minister in the church of God, like deacons, pastors, you must be a man of one wife. Before he said that, something must have happened, you know, in, in the churches of then. There were issues going on, there were strife going on. And that is why that, he said that, that, okay, enough of all this trouble, all this wonder. If you want to be a pastor, do this. And that is the only place I believe there is any admonition for a man, you know, on how many wives they can marry. We've seen the accounts of David, how many wives David married, you know, and how many hundreds of concubines he had. And even when he went astray and took one of his soldiers' wife, God was angry with him when God sent the prophets to him. That even if he wanted me to give you more wives, I would have given you. You did not have to kill anyone to take their wife. So if God is not saying, why did, why can't you have one wife? We have Solomon. You can't count thousands of wives, hundreds of concubines, you know, one million side chicks. Am I saying it is okay? Am I saying it is right? No, that's not what I'm saying. Because as a married woman myself, I do not want my husband to have another wife. Okay? I don't want to share my husband with anyone. That's the truth of the matter. 
But then there are circumstances that make people to have second wives. Now let's. I want to rule out the 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 quote and unquote uh, lust of the eyes. You know where people are not able to control their desires and they are just um, what's the other word now? They are, they don't get satisfied. They want more. Oh, this one is pretty. I want her. Oh, she is fair in complexion. I want her. Oh, that one is dark, ebony. I love ebony. I want her. Oh, that one is slim. I want the one that is horrible. She's chubby. I want her. They want everything. I want. I don't want to look at that at all. You know that happens, and that's actually that happens to most men. But I don't want to deliberate on. I want to deliberate on the important issues, more important reasons why you see a lot of men having second wives. One of it could be barrenness, which we were able to study also in the Bible. Now, it's funny. The first person that, ha that happened to was Abraham. You know, and it was so bad. I mean, he was over 80 years old. I'm not using correct figures, so bear with me. I'm not doing Bible study like that. You know, he was over 80 years old, yet no child. I do not see any... I haven't seen. Maybe there, there are people like that. I have not seen. I have not heard. Maybe some of you watching me, you, you might have seen or heard. Any man who would patiently wait for his wife for 80, 90 years. <laughs> what am I even talking about? Any man who would wait for his wife for 10 years. There are people like that, but there are very few. Now, we're not talking of 20 years, 30 years. Imagine what the families would have gone through or what they would have even gone through themselves from their families, from friends who would have attacked them here and there. Tell them, what are you doing? I want to carry my grandchild. I want to carry my granddaughter. You, if she's not giving you a child, you have to go and remarry. And sometimes the problem is not even with the woman. Most times the problem is with the man. But the woman is the, the one the focus goes on. So, in that instances, some men are pushed, are pressurized to go marry another person, to go marry another wife. That's one. Secondly, still on the issue of barrenness, some are advised. Maybe if somebody, if another woman takes in for you, it may be, quote and unquote, maybe your wife too will be able to have her own child. There's an adage in your bag that says, Ori omoni kori po, ori omoni kori omowale. Okay? The, 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 the sound and the joy and the noise of a child in the home will bring more children in the home. That's secondly. Then the third one, still on barrenness, is when you have a spiritual message that says, you cannot have a child unless, through this person you are dating or you're married to at the moment, unless somebody else has a child for you. So that's still on barrenness. Look at uh, um, Anna, you know, and the husband. She was barren before she had Samuel. The husband had to marry somebody else. Had five, seven children before Anna was able to have her own. Different scenarios. So we cannot just look at people from the face value, you know, and judge them and condemn them. Oh, that, oh, why would you marry another wife and you call yourself a Christian? You don't know what they are going through. You don't know. I believe so many men don't even want second wife. They want peace of mind. They want peace of mind. One woman and their children, they want a happy home. But what if that woman is not giving them happiness? You know? And they, just, and they cannot even let go of the woman. Some men in Africa, um, back in our father's times, and even our forefathers' time, we saw men still do today. They will tell you, listen, is that your wife is giving you problem? Marry another one, then her brain will come down. Which is not the solution anyway, because you're only adding five pounds to fire. You're only turning your house from a peaceful home to the, a mad house, if I may use the word. You know, so it's not that some men really, really want to do that. But they find themselves in situations that are bigger than them. So if any man chooses, I'm saying again, I am not looking at those who are who have chosen to marry another wife, second, third wife, because they are just not 
what's the best word to use now? I don't want to be rude or be insulting. But they have ojukokoro. What's uh, please somebody borrow me English? What is ojukokoro? Nobody is contributing. Don't let, let me be ready as a romantic basic. What is ojukokoro? Somebody who is never satisfied with what they have. So those are different people entirely. But I'm talking about people who find themselves in situations bigger than them and that has made them to decide to have a second wife. Barrenness is one side. Now we look at, at the second one. Funny enough as it may sound, God can even tell you go and marry a second wife. You will say, where did I get that from? We have two examples in the Bible. If okay, even Abraham Abraham's own was a permissive will of God. It was not the perfect will of God. When Sarah told Abraham, "Go and get, um, go and come and marry Agar, my house help," and then Abraham went back to God and said, "Listen, this woman is asking me to do this," and God said, "Go ahead and do it." Okay, that's one. And then the second was the was it Prophet Jeremiah? Not Jeremiah. Help me out some way. My, my husband, help me out. Which prophet is that? We have the account of a prophet who was told the name is just disappeared in my head. Who was told in scriptures to marry a sec to marry an allot. To, yeah, to marry an allot. That was the word. To marry an allot. Do we judge? Do we condemn? Are they not are they not Christians? What is Christian? Okay, maybe then Christianity was not practiced like that. There was no Christianity, but there was no Christianity on to Jesus Christ. But they are God's children, and God allowed it. God is bigger than religion. God is bigger than Christianity. We are we 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 under the umbrella of Christianity that we are. So if people find themselves in situations that are bigger than them. And they choose to remarry or they choose to have a second wife. Please do not murder them. Do not condemn them. We can encourage, we can advise, but we cannot condemn. It is wrong. Even as the Bible says that do not judge. Don't judge. So who are we to judge? Ojukokoro means never to be satisfied. Thank you, sir. I don't see you on video. Um, Pastor Tochuku, you need to request for me to add you on. I see you've joined us. But if you request to come up on video, then I can bring you on, sir. Let me see if I can search your name. Really, really sorry, guys, for this delay. I can't find, I can't find you on as viewers, Pastor. I don't know what's going on, but I can see you are here, but I can't see you as any uh, sugar. Pastor, if you can hear me, can you please come to the video section? If you look on your phone, if you go down to the under it, there are different, different buttons there. There is one that is showing the image, uh, two figures of head coming together. I don't know if I'm speaking English today or German. If you click on it, then I'll be, that is requesting for me to bring you live to the program, then I can add you. While I'm waiting for Pastor to get through to the technical parts, Thanks, you. I can see more people have joined. Thank you all for joining. Please make today interesting for me. Somebody say something. Let's talk about this together. Why do men marry two wives? Why do men marry two wives? Why do men marry two wives? We see King. Somebody said, um, to, uh, I think I was reading an article that said, Plenty of wives are for kings in those days. Why? Because they have the money. They have all that it takes. 
to, to manage the woman. But the truth of the matter is, they can't. It's not only money that a woman needs in marriage. A woman needs more than that. But then what we, we want to enjoy as marriage today is not what marriage was then. You know, they were just there for reproductive, reproduction, and to keep them, keep, um, keep, keep them company when they need it, to suit them when they need it. It's only like the first wife or somebody they, they really, really cherish so much that even that they would tell their problem to or that will advise them. You know, a woman was come here, satisfy me, bring my food. Even servants would bring the food. The woman doesn't even need to bring the food, even. You know, it was a different thing entirely. Unlike now that we demand our husband's attention 24 7. If I'm at work, you have to call me. If I'm sleeping, you have to test me to double check. Am I really sleeping? Am I okay? If I'm at home, or are you at home? Have you gotten to work? What are you doing? We want attention 24 7. Can you give two women such attention? Can you? Looking at the Ojukokoro part of it, can you give two women attention? It's not possible. It's not, I'm going to read a scripture here quickly. Let me see if I can find it. Let me go up. Exodus 21 verse 10. And this is a story of if a man marries a slave. If you read up from verse, verse 5, Exodus 21, verse 10. But if you read up to from verse 5, it's talking about if a man buys a slave, a female slave, and chooses to marry that slave, you know, as a wife. The Bible is saying in verse 10 that if he takes another wife to himself, he shall not diminish her food, her clothing, or her marital rights. You will not say because you bought her as a slave, then you will not treat her as a slave. The moment she becomes your wife, she has an equal right with the wives that was before her. So if you choose to marry another wife, can you manage them? Can you love them both equally? Is it possible? Can you, can you cater for all their needs? Sorry, go on, Before you go to work yourself, and then you run around, you're testing this. You, there will be times when you'll be calling Taye Kende. You'll be calling Kende Idowu. You'll miss her and they're like, ah, don't you know my name again? Why are you calling her name here? Genocide will come. Strife will come. You know, strife will come. All these things, they will come in place. More headache for you. But then there is a Bible verse that which is Genesis. And it's also repeated in Matthew. It says, when two... When a, a man will leave his family, the woman will leave his family. That means the father and mother. And they will cleave together and become one. So if two people come together and become one, two, the Bible did not say three. The Bible did not say four. The Bible did not say five. So that is Genesis. And it is repeated in Matthew in the New Testament. So if you say you believe in New Testament, you don't believe in Old Testament, it is written in both Old, Old and New Testament. That two will come together and become one. The Bible never says three will come together and become one. Meaning that that is the perfect will of God. The perfect will of God is one man, one wife. But the Bible also makes me to understand that we are in a wicked world and the heart of a man is very, very wicked. And so there are so many wickedness happening all around us. So many wickedness happening, you know, in our lives, in the family we come from, in within the church, everywhere. So because of this wickedness, brings about the permissive will of God. Because of the hardening of our heart, the, the law of Moses, you know, came about that if a woman was caught in adultery, let her go. Originally, that was not the original plan of God. The, the, the perfect will and plan of God is, even if your wife was caught in such an act, the Bible says forgive. But then wickedness abounds. Wickedness increases. Pastor Tochuku, where are you, sir? I see my beautiful sister there that's joined. I cannot see your name. 
but I see a beautiful face there on the screen. Kike Lomo, thank you for joining. I see Brother Oluwa Shegun Kadri watching. Thanks for joining, sir. Thank you all for joining. Uh, Pastor Tochupi is having problem joining in. I'm going to take a screenshot to him to show the screen. Sorry, 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 everyone. Okay. Who again is there? I see my handsome brother from Ibado. Oga Claudius, thanks for joining in. Okay, Stola, God bless you, Ma. Kike Lomo is what's showing on my screen. Thank you for joining. How many wives can a man marry? How many wives? Let me find you another scripture. Isaiah 4 1, that's another reason. Isaiah 4 1, my husband hammers on that so many times. And seven women shall take hold of one man in that day, saying, We will eat our bread and wear our own clothes. Let us be called by your name and take away our reproach. You know, back in those days, I have seen, before I break down that scripture more, today, and today I'm talking of what is happening today, I, I don't want to begin to quote and mention names. There are so many pastors today, you know, and, I'm, and I, it's, it's got nothing to do with denomination, who are actually preaching polygamy. Because now, back in those days, you don't see so many widows without anyone catering for them. All the widows are under a cover, probably because some of them, their husband have died during war. During war. And then if you don't look after them, if you don't marry them, if a man doesn't take them into his shelter, into his home, who's going to cater for them? Who's going to take away their reproach? You know, so that's one of the reasons why men in those days marry two wives. But now, it still happens, people go to war, people die. Who's looking after those widows? If you say don't marry two wives, don't marry three wives. My husband, don't say because I'm doing this program, you go and marry second wife tomorrow. My hand is not inside though. Uh -huh. That's a disclaimer. If if we say as Christians, don't marry two wives, then how do we deal with it? How do we handle it? Back then there was something like singles. When you were of a marriage book age, they will already arrange husband for you. Your dowry is paid, you move. Oh, Lori, Maria Ganti said, please, if you wish is for a man to marry two or more wives, then what is adultery? Why is God against adultery according to Ten Commandments? Adultery is when you fornicate and you're married and then you fornicate. Fornication is when you have sex before marriage. But when you commit adultery in marriage is when you sleep with another woman in marriage. But now the difference is this. You see another woman you like and you want her. You go ahead and pay a dowry and you marry her before you have sex with her. But if you have side chick, all right, or some whichever way, you have sex with another woman outside marriage, it's adultery. That's simply put. But I understand where you're coming from as well. If we are, take your question in, in another angle, if the Bible is not against people like David, who have set hundreds of wives, hundreds of concubines, then why is there Ten Commandments? Now, I did not write the Bible, so I cannot answer that one. Because me too, I'm still doing digging, digging deep. Now, that is how, if we look at maybe the Greek version, maybe we'll have a better understanding. But the, the diluted English we are reading now, it's it's very complicated. Now, one verse tells you don't do this. Another verse tells you you can do that. But if you read the the Jewish version, it's a different interpretation entirely. Okay, I'm not going to that one. What I'm trying to say is this: in so many ways, God did not frown against David, against Solomon, against so many people. 
even at the Abraham we are talking about, after Haggai left, he still married another wife, making three people have children for him. And I don't think the scripture recorded anywhere that God was angry with him, yet he was the friend of God. But if you leave your marital wife, you break your marital vow, and you sleep with another woman, it's called adultery. I cannot do justice to that place. If there's anybody online who can help out with that question, I will be very, very glad because I want to learn myself. And the question against, again is from Olori Maria. If you be, if wish is for a man to marry two or more wives, then what is adultery? Why is God against adultery according to Ten Commandments? Or it's a shame for some reason, Pastor Tochuku, our guest for this night, is on the program, but he does not know how to come on video. And I cannot even find his name. Pastor, have you tried clicking? Are you watching the video live? Or did you click on it? Did you click play? Try and click play. I do not understand how some people can watch it and yet they are not really watching it. I don't know how Facebook works. Pastor, if you can hear me, try and click play. Don't just watch it on the surface. Join into the program. Then I can see you and then I can bring you on myself. Yeah, I've seen, I mean, I have three people here on video that I can bring in. I don't know why I can't bring on Pastor. Yeah, so many people here who can't even come on video. Somebody has just joined in now that can come on video. Who is this? I did die here. Thanks for joining in. Um, but I did die here. I did in car. Thanks for joining in. And the topic we are looking at again tonight is how many wives can I marry? And I'm struggling really, really hard with my guests tonight. Wonderful. I'm still going back to Isaiah 4, verse 1. And then we're also going to look at my, um, when, what do I call it now? When your wife is far away, as one of the reasons why some people end up marrying second wife. Okay, I think my brother is joining in. I think he's joining in a moment. Okay, I think there's another question here. And that is from Lori Maria. As a Christian, adultery is a sin of a married man or woman having sexual relations with anyone other than his or her husband, 100%. But what do we now say about the concubines, the, the, the kings they had in the Bible, like David, Solomon, and many more? They had hundreds, 300, you know? I mean, David had 300 concubines. And they are, he's not married to them, they are concubines. Yet the scripture is not frowning at it. Does it make it right, though? So that's not what I'm saying. I'm just trying to break down scripture on marriage issues. And there's so many of it anyway. So much, so much, so much. Pastor Tochuku, where are you? Okay, I think I'm on the show on my own today. Anybody else with any other contribution? Anybody want to come on video? Pastor Tochuku, since you cannot come on video, can you make contribution by test messages? And I can read it out. Maybe that's what we'll have to do. 30 minutes is gone into the program already. Now, I'm going back to Isaiah 4, verse 1. 
I'm going to read it again. And seven women shall take hold of one man in that the saying, we will eat our own bread, we will wear our own clothes. Let us just be called by your name and take away our reproach. And we see that happening already. It is happening already. We've seen women like, I have my money, I have my masters, I have my car, my everything. I just need a husband. You know, we have it there. And, that, and then we also see some other women who will tell you, I don't need a man. I don't need a husband. I'm okay. It's a lie. It's a lie. They will still come out at some point and join the woman Isaiah is, has prophesied about. They will come back and ask, ah, just be my husband. I don't mind. I, I don't mind being the fourth wife. Just let me let them call me by your name. That means to say there is a lot of honor and respect that comes with being married. Honor and respect that comes with being married. So the Bible desires and the, the Bible prays. The Bible wants every man, not the Bible, God wants every man and every woman to be married. That's why he created them male and female. That's why he, when Adam was created, okay, something was missing and then he made Eve. But now, at, for some reason, I don't know, I don't know the mind of God, but the reality of it is that we have more women than men. Who is going to marry them? Are they going to remain single? Are they going to remain single? Olori said, Olori Maria, there is no justification for adultery because the Bible totally spoke about it in the Ten Commandments. 100%. But my question is this. The 300 concubines David had, how come there was no condemnation concerning it? How come the Bible did not record any anything against it was it okay for them then because they are not not christians did these new laws come about after jesus christ because in the old accounts there was no the bible said in the ten commandment which is in old testament yes don't commit adultery but same in that old testament almost even all the men the 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 the, the big names in scriptures, most of them had second wives. Now, don't, now, another thing is this, does not mean that every example we have in, in scripture are right. Some of them is for us to learn, you know, to learn what has happened to them. For instance, let's go back to Abraham, who had two wives. At some point, he didn't even have peace in his home. At some point, his first child, firstborn son, he had to send him away. Put yourself in the shoes of our guy. So it's, it's so complicated. I mean, I can't even imagine my husband sending me away with my child. So if for any reason you not find a woman in that situation of being a second wife, let us not condemn them as well. Is it not better for them to be a second wife than to be committing a fornication? Is it not more honorable to be called Mrs. Lagbaja number two or number three than to be seen as a wayward woman than for men to come to you pretend to love you, pretend to be there for you, and abandon you. And then they will be the one that will, that will be counting it. Ah, I'm number five that has had my way with her. I'm number 10. Oh, she's cheap, or oh, she's useless. She's this, she's that. Is it no more honorable to be wife number two or to be wife number three? Which is more better? But above all, which whichever number you find yourself, do not marry someone 
who will not respect or honor you or who will not treat you equal. That equal even is in quote again, no? because it can never be equal. It's not possible. But at the same time, it will, it will not be something that will be so noticeable to you or to people around you who will be able to respect you and care for you. And that is why also it is important in today and today's world that we are, that a woman must also be able to fend for herself. If you find yourself in the position of, of a second wife or a third wife, and your man, you know, you want to wait for the man for your everything, can he manage it? Can he look after you the way you want? So it's a compromise. Now, the other one I want to talk about is this. We have people who have married, who have their wives back home in Nigeria or wherever, which on other part of the world. I'm using Nigeria as an example because that is my home. So I know a bit of, I know more about that than any other country. So I'm using Nigeria as an example. If for any reason, for any reason you have left your wife in Nigeria, you came to Europe or any other part of the world, you know, to find greener pastures. And you want to be faithful to your wife. You know, you don't want to commit adultery, number one. Number two, you don't want to marry a second wife. And you know of a truth and of a truth that the only way you can get your papers is if you marry somebody or if you have a child. You might have, you, you might get your papers Maybe if you, you have stayed in the country, I'm, I'm not sure how many years it is now. Is it for 10 years or for 20 years? Then you can put in for your papers. But everybody knows that the easiest way is through marriage or through having a child. And if that man goes back to his wife and discovers that, listen, this is the situation on ground. Okay? This is not what I want. So they are talking about perfect will and permissive will. This is not what I want. But for us to be able to move ahead, for me to be able to cater for you and the, and, and, and the children are left behind if they are children, you know, for me not to come back to Nigeria empty-handed and all the, the, the pain and all we have to go through for, to, to get me to England, if it's not going to be a waste, then I have to marry another wife. So what do we do to that? If there is an understanding on that ground, do we say the man has committed a crime? Is it not better for such honesty than for the man to be lying to the wife and be lying to other women here? So if for any reason you find yourself in such situation, the greatest and the biggest good you can do to yourself is to communicate to your wife. What I'm talking as a woman here, what hurts us most is when we come to discover things by mistake. You know, when we come to discover things with shock, things you didn't plan for, and we feel so hot that, how didn't he tell me? Why can't my husband explain to me? We don't want to find anything by surprise. Talk to us. And you say, ha, ah, hey, woman, if I talk to her, She'll go and do juju, she'll not let it work. If you make her understand, there's a different way from you just telling her or informing her, I want to do this. Another is making her understand and carrying her along. Make her understand, listen, I can't get a job, I can't do nothing. Do you want me to come back home and let us be drinking our gari? Or do you want a better life? You need to make your wife understand the reason why you want to marry another wife. You must carry your woman along. And I've also heard even in today, there's so many marriages happening now that the, the husbands are marrying two, three wives, you know, with the knowledge of their wives. Things are changing. But do not condemn. Do not condemn. Let us encourage people. Let us, let us, 
let us be understanding of the challenges people are going through. Let me read one or two more scriptures and then Ah, there's something that's very, very, I read something here. Thanks for joining, Grace Daramola. Praise Asha, thanks for joining. You are welcome. And we're looking at how many wives can a man marry? First Timothy 3.12. Let Dickens be, of, be the husband of one wife, managing their children and their own households. And the um, my lovely brother that joined last week, Prophet Abiyadusule, said something about that. That if you're going to be a deacon, if you're going to be a pastor, do not marry to her. And that's what the scripture is saying in 1 Timothy 3 12. But for adventure, you already have two wives. Okay? Before you're called into ministry, then don't. You can still do the work of God without being a pastor. You can still do the work of God without being a deacon because you want to bring honor and respect you know to yourself and to the to the office you want to hold to the office you want, it's so complicated life is so complicated but wherever we find ourselves you know let us be able to manage it and let us not, first of all, forgive yourself. Do not condemn yourself. And it's not about what people are going to say. It's about what, what is God saying about the situation you are in? What is God saying about what is happening in your life? And what does scripture also say about the steps you want to take? If you have a conviction in your heart and the scripture is not against what you are doing, then be at peace. Be at peace. Deuteronomy 21. Mr. Lanre Adeniji, can you help me with the Bible verses, please? Deuteronomy 21, 15 to 17. I'm going to read a bit of that. If a man has two wives, the one loved and the other unloved, and both the loved and the unloved have borne him children. And if the firstborn son belongs to the unloved, then on the day when he assigns his possession as an inheritance to his sons, he may not treat the son of the loved as the firstborn in preference to the son of the unloved. Now, who is the firstborn? But he shall acknowledge his firstborn the son of the unloved, by giving him a double portion of all that he has. For he is the first fruit of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. Now, breaking down what this which is saying, I think, yeah, the version is not today's English version. If you have two wives, one, one comma I have there is that, it says, the one loved and the other unloved, um, you have two wives. One is, is being called loved and the second wife unloved. Now, what is which you're saying there? That if there is no way you can love the two wives equally. So if for any reason you choose to be a second wife or a third wife, do not be deceived that you'll be loved equally. So whatever reason is making you to decide to be wife number two or wife number three, those reasons must be strong, must be solid, and you must be willing and ready to carry the cross that comes with it. Now, last week somebody made, uh, may ask a question that, how come when men marry new wives, the second wife, they tend to treat the second wife better than the first and you know and i guess uh Woli Abiodusule said something that because she's the new chassis it's like somebody who buys a new car you pamper the new car you look after the new car more than the old not because you do not love the old anymore but the new one is the one that is raining at the moment 
and at some if you to get to a level the the new car the the the, the that um anxiousness you know that is in you with the new car it will come down we tend to come down and then if you want to look at value of the first car and the second car you know and then you realize oh this first car has served me more this first car was stronger this first car you know has done more for me there's always a time in a man's a man's life where they sit down and think where they remember i'm talking of when there is no black magic involved because if black magic involved that's another story entirely so i'm talking about normal scenarios because it, it's so diverse different things people go through in their family different things that happen to people in their homes it's so diverse so i'm not looking at people that that black magic if is involved in their in their thinking and all that no i'm talking of the normal norms so if the new wife is being pampered now being exalted now it's for a while so which is the scripture calling on loved and loved that's a question mark so where there is two wives or three involved there will always be one that is loved more than the other look at the accounts of jacob and esau they are twins born to one woman yet one was loved than the other even the scripture said that god said jacob i love esau i hate that's another topic for another day we have children as well we love all our children but there's one that is so dear to us more than the other probably because they are obedient they don't stress us they don't when we say do this they do it with joy they don't grumble or even their their child bearing was easy you know maybe at the time when we gave back to them you know things turned around in the family there was breakthrough there are reasons why we tend to to pamper one child or show love to one child at the other and so also is two wives or three wives there will be a reason or maybe the time the man married the second wife things turn around especially for people who've been buried before they married the second wife so the, the second wife comes in she took in three months after the 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 first wife also takes in that's double joy so the first the second wife tends to be more pampered because why at the time she came in into the family into the whole this turn around so it to go into such uh, arrangement polygamy you need to be open-minded you need to be open open-minded okay and then now is the bible is saying that if the unloved one i'm i'm gonna put it this way because i'm not sure what that scripture is saying but i'm gonna call the loved one the first wife and the unloved one the second wife and the scripture is saying that if it's the second wife that first had a son for you before your first wife had a son that is deuteronomy 21 from verse 15 to 17. and the second one is the one that had the first son at the point when you're going to share your inheritance either your will or you want to divide your assets or anything the bible is saying that the 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 first born son does not matter who has it either the first or the second wife is the one that must get the biggest share so if it's your second wife that had your son first son for you that you are not to show partiality you are not to show preferences to the son of the unloved the son of the second wife is the one that must get the biggest share because he is the first born so it's not about uh it is yale or yeah we know the firstborn son must get the biggest share before you now share to the second son. So when we talk about polygamy, it's not a new thing. We cannot write it off. Now there are countries like Kenya that have made laws 
It is not just about advice or encouragement. It has now become a law. No man must marry one wife. I mean, I do not, I, I'm not going to dig into the issue of what is happening in Kenya. Why such a law was passed. Maybe people were dying, maybe they needed more population, or maybe the women were just suffering and there's more single than married. And things were going so wrong in the family. Okay, but for, for whatever reason it is, the law has been passed. No man must marry one wife. It started for minimum two wives. Uh, is Isaiah not coming to pass? Isaiah for chapter chapter four verse one. Is it not coming to play? Meaning that we also get into closer and closer to the end. Again, I say, Genesis is the foundation of it all, which is the perfect will of God that a man will leave his father and mother and cling to his wife and two shall become one. But is it again, is it like that? Is it like that? So do not let anybody fool you with the quote and unquote Christianity. Let no one fool you and tell you, or as a Christian, you cannot be a second wife, or as a Christian, you cannot marry more than one wife. There is no law that says you can't do that. But then the perfect will of God is that you marry one. But if you find yourself in such situation for different reasons, do not judge yourself. Do not condemn yourself. And do not see yourself, you know, not being in, in God's love. If God loved David so much, gave David 700 wives, 300 concubines, and said, if we even want more, I will give you. Why condemn yourself? Thank you all for joining. That's all we can take tonight. It's a shame my guest could not log in into the video. Some technical problem there. Uh, thank you all, Prince Duck Ansom. Thank you, Auntie Ungozi, Brother Deyemi Oluwa. Um, thank you for El Betel Mini Prayer Ministry. And that is my mother. Thank you, Mommy Nunoyo. Um, I see Councillor Fumi Ademilua. Thanks for joining, Ma. Um, Praise Asha, Grace Daramola, thank you. I see Olorun Femi, that is my daddy's wife. Thank you, Mommy Olala, for joining. And where is this of my other sister who has been very, very. Oh, Lori Maria, thanks, Ganti. Thank you for joining, Ma, and for contributing. Akim Kole, thank you. Thank you all for joining. And because my guests could not join tonight, I've been able to summarize what we treated last week and added one or two things to it. Okay, until I see you next week, Wednesday, with another topic. Ah, beautiful one. Men also cry. So many times we always talk about women, women, women. So we've treated men for the past two weeks now. Next week we see on men men also cry you know one of the things that has distressed so many men is what we're looking at next week wednesday okay i'm also going to have uh, a beautiful sister with me tomorrow who is um alagaduro i don't know what to call that in english you know she's alagaduro and she's seen so many marriages she's been able to um, bring to a lot of unions together she's seen a lot she's going to be joining us next week Wednesday, 8 p.m. And it's going to be on Facebook as well with your host, your humble Ekene Mudupe Adeniji. Okay, until next week, it's a good night from me. 
All right, thank you for your love. Thank you for your contribution. And God bless you.